Hey guys, Julian Goldie here, and today we've got another interview with Andy from Post Starga. How's it going, Andy? Doing good, Julian. Thanks for having me. No worries. So today we're going to be talking about link building outreach, how to get more backlinks, how to improve your results with outreach, and also, you know, what sort of content should you use too. So uh, do you want to just sort of introduce yourself, Andy? Sure. So uh, I guess a bit about my background. My name is Andy Cabasso. Um, many years ago, I my interest in digital marketing, I started a digital agency specifically focusing on the legal market. So our clients were mainly law firms. We did uh, web design and paid search, SEO, grew that agency and then sold it uh, to another company in the legal tech space. And then after that, um, kind of one idea that my co-founder of the agency and I had was we were, we were trying to do link building for ourselves and for our clients to help them get more traffic, but we couldn't find a very scalable solution for it. So we built, we built that solution. We built Postaga, which is uh, an all-in-one outreach platform that helps with everything from prospecting to find relevant outreach opportunities to uh, finding and ver validating email addresses for potential contacts and people you want to reach out to, and then building and sending uh, custom tailored email sequences to them. And so that's where we're at today. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool tool. I've, I've tried it out for a few different outreach campaigns. And I remember doing a, a YouTube video, well, a couple of YouTube videos about it yeah. last year. So, I mean, one thing that I found with outreach tools and software is mm -hmm. like, yeah, there's so many different setups like you can go from Ahrefs mm. to Hunter to Lemlist to you know right. and you've got all these sort of separated tools that you want to merge together um otherwise you're going to be spending a lot of time especially if you if you don't do that much outreach mm. then everything's fragmented and it can get a bit messy so that's what I liked about Postaga it sort of fitted it all into one thing yeah thanks and that, that's part of like what we were looking at when we were talking like initially interviewing agencies we're like well what's your product process and they're like well i'm either using a, a scraper in one aspect or i'm using hrefs and then i export those to csvs and then i yeah. import those into an email finder and then if my email finder doesn't have a built-in validator then i need to take those yes. emails and put them into like never bounce or whatever and then after that i import them into my email platform and then i send those out and then i have to have a crm after that as well and so it's anywhere from like three to five or six different pieces of software sometimes and so we just kind of thought we could simplify that yeah definitely when you got all those subscriptions going on it's uh, yeah. it gets a bit messy yeah definitely so i mean your tool is for outreach do you do a lot of outreach yourself as well? Every day. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm doing outreach for like a, kind of a wide variety of things, really putting the platform, trying to put it to its limits. So I'm doing outreach for link building for my articles. I'm also doing like PR oriented outreach to get the word out about Postaga. Mm -hmm. So like one thing that I, I do that I like, I recommend to people who have like SaaS businesses is um, you can find where your competitors or other products in your industry are getting write-ups on other blogs or mentioned in podcasts and reach out to them to see if they'll, since their audience is interested in that, uh, covering your product. Um, it's also a good way to find potential affiliates for your product as well. Um, I'm also, you know, doing, um, using our platform for podcast tours. And so yeah. that's, that's been kind of one of, my, one of my favorite secret weapons. Um, I've been on like say three dozen podcasts in the last year or so and I don't have a podcast myself um which some people are like well well you have a pod like it's so like one thing I see is like a lot of podcasters do the podcast swaps with each other um but like one thing I like about podcasts is it gets it gets you in front of a new audience this is yep. maybe a bit meta Definitely. since I'm here on a podcast talking about this <laughs> but it gets you in front of a, a new audience that is relevant to what you have to say and relevant to your business. But also whenever you're usually featured on a podcast, they'll mention you and your site in the show notes as a, usually with a backlink. And so that's a, a win with a backlink there. And if the show is like syndicated on other platforms with the notes on those platforms as well, then you're mentioned in a, in a bunch of places. Mm, that's true so it's kind of like it's almost like you're doing the skyscraper technique 
but for podcasting and for PR and everything else too, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're following the same sort of theory of reverse engineering your competitors, mm -hmm. seeing where they're getting mentioned, and then knowing if you reach out to them as well, chances are they're going to want to feature you on the podcast or YouTube channel or yep. whatever else. Exactly. And um, and it's and I wouldn't say like I would just do it for competitors. I would also do it for other products that are not direct competitors, but in your space. And so, mm. um, and that can be like a, a good angle as well. Cause like sometimes with, as you probably know, with like, if you're doing skyscraper outreach purely from that traditional approach of, Hey, I saw that you have this article and you linked to this other article. My article is better. Drop that link and link to me instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like they'll, they'll kind of say like, um, Nah. I don't, I don't know. Like I, you want me to change this link and like make, like maybe your article is better. Is it, how, is it really worth my time to do all of this? Um, and so um, if, if it's something like, like, like that kind of demand of drop the, drop this and, and go to me instead or something like that, that can be like, especially now that everyone, a lot, a lot of people are doing skyscraper uh, with that kind of approach. Um, so like Basically, I like this idea of looking at not just direct competitors, but other complementary products in a particular industry or space. Um, and I've found good success with that. Yeah, it's good because then you can, you get more prospects to go at as well, right? So rather than mm -hmm. just fishing from a very limited pool of your competitors, if you branch out a bit and you look at, all right, what are some uh, horizontal similar platforms what are some SaaS companies that are doing similar things and and how can i scrape their prospects too then all of a sudden mm. you know you might be 10x in the number of prospects you got to go at which is it, increasing the number of opportunities too exactly and especially if your like direct competitor list is narrow like there are only so many opportunities or so many things that your like direct competitors are doing but if if you kind of have an idea of what your customer profile is interested in and you're like, okay, so like, let's say I make SEO software or something like something very specific. Yeah. I may not just be interested in direct competitors that make this kind of SEO software, but something related to digital marketing software. And so maybe I'll look a bit broader. And so not just at something like in terms of like SEO software, like look at something like Ahrefs, but something else in the digital marketing space tools that digital marketers use like Canva or something mm -hmm. like that, for example. So yeah, taking a wider approach will give you a, a ton more opportunities. Yeah, we do something similar sometimes for our clients. If we've exhausted the number of prospects they can go at, we try and like cross niche. So mm -hmm. we'll try and merge their industry with something else. Like for example, mm -hmm. we were doing link building for a dating website. Mm -hmm. Every single competitor had like paid for a link or, you know, the competition was crazy yeah. to get backlinks. So then we, we created an article about anxiety and dating reached out to all those other websites that talk about anxiety and all mm. of a sudden it's much easier to build links. Ah, uh, clever. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah. I think it, it works really well. Definitely. Um, and mm. then how, how do you find like, con if you're promoting your articles mm. or if you're trying, if you're creating content specifically for outreach, mm. how do you find your content ideas? Um, typically. So typically when I'm thinking about content, uh, and especially content that I want to do outreach for, yeah. um, I want to build something that's that I would want to link to if I was another website that, like that would be relevant. And so, like this idea of like a linkable asset or something like yeah. that. And so, um, you know, in, in general, like what I want to do is I want to create I want to create something new and something original. Um, often I might create like a YouTube video to accompany it if it's like a particular strategy. Um, but in terms of like ideas where I go to, I, I particularly like, I love Ahrefs uh, and that's been yeah. like a good source yeah, for me for coming up with ideas, seeing like, but also seeing like, all right, well, how competitive is this particular topic um, and getting kind of ideas from that. Yeah. Yeah. Ahrefs is a good tool for that. Have you ever tried like the others, you know, like SEMrush or Mars, have you tried those for prospecting too? Or I, I have, but I, I'm pretty set in with Ahrefs. I, I just personally prefer that a lot more. Yeah. yeah. Once, once you're locked in as well and you build all your systems around that, it's very difficult mm. to switch, isn't it? 
Um, yeah. So, like, when you're actually doing the average, I know one of the biggest complaints I hear from mm. other SEOs I know, or just people trying to build links to their site, mm. is that everyone they reach out to is asking for money for mentions. You know, they're asking for paid links. Obviously, it's a commercial opportunity, and websites know they can sell mm -hmm. back links. Do you have any strategies for overcoming that, or what what sort of percentage do you, f do you find actually convert from the outreach? So, yeah, so there, I guess there are a few questions to tackle there. So I would say that, I mean, definitely more often than not, like, like in terms of like what the replies that I get are, the positive replies um, in terms of the ones that skew forward towards, oh, that sounds great. I added a link for you mm. compared to, uh, uh, yeah, I'll link to you, but give me somewhere between, I don't know, on the average between like, 40 to $200 or something yeah. like that. Um, I'd say like these days and like it varies by industry, but more of them I would say are like pay are like pay to play opportunities and things like that. And I just got, I just got one uh, reply yesterday that wanted, uh, I was looking for to build links in like a listicle article and I figured like this yeah. is a good opportunity. And they're like, it'll be uh, an $800 per year subscription for nice. your link. That's, I mean, it's sometimes it's outrageous the prices that come out with them. Um, I think like some, a lot of websites, they don't know, they genuinely don't know the value of a link, mm. right? So sometimes they just put the finger in the air, they see which <laughs> way the wind blows and they come up with a number there. I mean, I know that uh, one SEO, he combats that. He, he was talking to me the other day. He said, uh, mm. what he does is he finds out how much traffic is going to that page, mm. figures out how much you pay cost per click on that page mm. and then sort of come up with a figure and, and show them the, the stats based on that. So you get, so you come back to them with data and you say, listen, the maximum this link <laughs> is worth is, is X amount. Um, but yeah, I, I think there are ways of negotiating free links as well. For, right? for sure. I, I think, yeah, like, so that a few strategies that like I, I, I might try to employ based on what I'm reaching out about and what the opportunity is, um, might try to parlay into like, um, like, hey, we have like we have an affiliate program, and so uh, I'm happy to sign you up. And this has like this percent commission, so you'd be getting money from this. Um, to something like um, offering like something you know relatively free for you, being like I'm happy to mention you in our newsletter or promote you yeah. promote it in socials or something like that. Something to to provide value, and and um, sometimes if if like the site is asking for money or in particular, if it's like a lot of money, I'll take a look at the site just in, in HRFs, I'll throw it in and see what their backlink profile is like, because I might, I'm going to, might be a little bit worried that if they are like, if this is their go-to and like they're, this is what they're doing a lot of, there might just be so many outbound links that it might worry me about the site itself. And I might be rethinking uh, getting that link. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you've got to be careful. First of all, if a link selling, if, if a website selling backlinks to you, mm -hmm. they could be selling it to casinos, Viagra websites, like all sorts of dodgy sites, right? And then also the other thing is, like you say, you've got to be careful with the ratio of mm -hmm. internal versus external links. There, yeah. I mean, there's no, on Ahrefs, for example, you can't find that number directly, right? You'd have to like sort of export the data and then figure it out yourself, I think, in terms of ratios. I guess in terms of ratios, yeah. Um, but um, typically what I'll, I'll try and do is just like a cursory look like at the site in Ahrefs and see like if they have like, if they're, if it looks like it's not a large site and they have tens of thousands of outbound links, I, I might be concerned. Yeah, and the other thing is, well, you've, you sort of, you got to be careful as well, because when these websites are selling backlinks, mm -hmm. sometimes they're purely designed for that. And all it is, is a way to mm -hmm. sell backlinks and try and manipulate Google's algorithm. Whereas re ideally you want backlinks from websites with real audiences, real traffic and actual content mm -hmm. people read. Right. And okay. it's, it's a case of filtering that out. Do you have any sort of like checklist for that or. So, so one thing I, I try to do is like it, like, it's not just like, I know a lot of people like look at the metric of like, I care specifically about DR or DA. And I want, I want a site that has a, like minimum this domain authority or domain rating. Um, 
but you might see like, all right, they have, they have a, like a good domain rating or authority, but no traffic. Um, and that's like, all right, so either they're like, art, like they're somehow are getting their domain rating artificially inflated, um, but might, might be cause for concern. And just, just a, like getting a link just from a higher authority site just for the sake of it, but it doesn't, the site itself doesn't have much traffic may not be that valuable um, in, in the long run. Yeah, I mean, even, like, I was listening to the Authority Hacker podcast mm. the other day, and there's even ways you can manipulate your traffic rankings now too, right? So you could rank for the most random keyword, you know, like they were saying, it could be like 0x, 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 which is like a Microsoft error. It gets like a million <laughs> people. <laughs> it's super easy to rank for, but it gets like millions of searches, right? So mm -hmm. then a website can manipulate the organic traffic listings, make mm -hmm. it look like they're getting millions of traffic, but actually they're ranking for like totally weird um, sort of keywords you, you would never want to rank for and aren't really relevant to anyone. Interesting. Um, so, yeah, yeah it's, I think you have to like kind of, for us, what we do is we, we look at checkpoints in combination, mm -hmm. right? So yes, we want high DR, yes, we want organic traffic, but then also there's all these other things you can check and you have to kind of think, right, there's no such thing as a perfect link. There's no such thing as, as everything being perfect down the list, but at the same mm -hmm. time, you just got to use a bit of common sense and, and some things you can't measure, right? Like when you look on a website, you can see by the look and feel of that site is it like if i looked at your site you know it's real content it's nicely designed it's something people would actually read it's like you know whereas you find all these pbns and, and generic wordpress templates that you have to be careful with and then, and then if you're like if you just take a quick like cursory look at, at an article like you know you after seeing so many articles you can tell when an article looks like it was just like spun up or like is trying to hit the right keyword density ratios and all of that. And like, it, it looks like, like they either used some like AI copywriting thing to just spit out pages or they're paying someone very, very little. And the content just doesn't have anything to say, but they're just doing it for some sort of like manipulation basically. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I mean, just out of curiosity for your site, you mm -hmm. said you had, creating content, you're mm -hmm. doing outreach, you're in quite a competitive niche, I would say, right? When you're writing content mm -hmm. about outreach or email deliverability, these mm -hmm. are super competitive topics. Yeah, it's funny in hindsight, like, all right, so I'm getting into the space of email, of like, uh, yeah, email outreach, and all of my content is gonna be about uh, link, related to link, like some sort of link building or SEO. So the other, companies in this space and other people writing about this also are not only writing about it, but they're also doing link building. And these are the, the people who know link building better than anyone. And so, yeah, yeah it, 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 it definitely <laughs> is super competitive. It's tough, isn't it? I mean, do you have any tips for trying to rank in a competitive industry, competitive niche? Um, so probably the, if, you, if we're just starting out, I would look for the low hanging fruit, the low keyword difficulty opportunities, things that you would be able to more easily rank for that your competitors have missed out on. Um, like do like a lot of those and, you know, it may not, it may not drive a ton of traffic, but it will, it will help with your, your domain, like just over time, it'll help with increasing your domain ranking and authority. Um, and it could be good for good for some good link building opportunities as well. And then just build up basically. Um, and then look for gaps that your competitors have missed. And then like, as you can, if there are, is like a money thing, a uh, money topic that you want to go after, just, you really have to put in a lot of effort into making sure that like, objectively speaking, like this content that you've created is better than uh, what, what else is out there and possibly like taking a different angle. I know um, it can be the case that you're thinking like, all right, so I wanna, I wanna make a better article than this article, which is like, let's say this article is, that's ranking is 10 things you need to know about local SEO or something like that. And so I'll make an article that's 12 things to know about local SEO. And so therefore it will be better, but just like that in and of itself may not, may not really may move not the needle. Enough. And so, yeah. So I would think of having other 
collateral or assets to provide uh, other types of content, whether it's like video or lead magnets and downloadables, something to make your content more unique and, and stand out. Yeah, I think as well, a lot of people do feel, you know, smaller websites, especially they feel kind of intimidated by competing with these giant domains. But I think mm. one of the things is that if you go after those low hanging fruits, if you go after the mm. lower competition keywords that maybe get quite a, a lot less volume, it's worth it for you. But also a lot of these bigger companies, it doesn't make sense for them to go after those keywords. So they just mm -hmm. leave them. And that's an opportunity for you as a smaller site, I would say for, for most sort of smaller business owners. Definitely. Yeah. Sure. And you, you used to have an SEO agency too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what, so when, did, when about did you sell that company? I, I sold the agency in 2016 and I uh, stayed on for a little while after that before uh, starting to build Postaga. Just out of curiosity, like how mm -hmm. did you find, because obviously as a, a link building agency mm -hmm. myself, like how did you find, how do you find running a SaaS software versus running an agency? Like how does it compare? Um, uh, I, so I, I guess I could speak to this from, I guess, not just running a SaaS and formally running an agency, but knowing a few people who have, uh, done similar things yeah. is, uh, I will say that there is this idea that you have that like running an agency, you're like, like you being, uh, being very service oriented. You, you, to be able to deliver more on and deliver more for your clients, you need more team members and, uh, you have like, that is your cost. And so to grow your agency and taking on more clients, you need more people. And the, there's a conception that, well, with a SaaS business, I've got, if I've got this amazing software, uh, people will just sign up for it and I can have one person on my team doing yeah, yeah, support yeah. Yeah. and it'll, and it'll be this huge high margin thing, but Living that's the not, dream. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's the dream idea, but it, yeah. in reality, it doesn't, it, it's not the case for, I'd say 99% of people I, I know that uh, are in the SaaS space, just because a, as you grow, you need more customer support people, you need more marketing people. Um, and so while you may not need like as many people for uh, service delivery like you would in an agency, um, customer support is a very real thing, especially like as your, if your product is more high ticket, you need uh, customer support people to help onboard your new customers and uh, engage with them. And so, um, yeah, it's not necessarily like super high margin at, as the dream, <laughs> I guess, yeah. as some, some people might think. And how do you, did you have a, sort of background in software development or anything like that, or I, I am non-technical. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. I, um, so the most advanced technical thing I have done ever, um, uh, early on, <laughs> early on when we went into lockdown in March of 2020, yeah. uh, when we were unable to like get, go to the grocery store and the grocery uh, getting delivery, they were all like all the time slots were unavailable. So I taught myself a bit of JavaScript and uh, Apple script to basically refresh the checkout page to look for an available time. And when it wow. would find an available time, it would make a big notification and ping me. That is the only thing I have ever coded in my entire life. Um, so my wow. co-founder is, is technical. Um, yeah, my co-founder is a developer um, with, uh, you yeah, know, since we were working together in our agency, he built internal tools that we were using for uh, for building our, our client sites and things like that. Um, and we've been, yeah, working together, uh, yeah, ever since then. It's quite an in interesting combination, I would say. Like, I don't know if you've ever come across, like, I don't know, Traction or, you know, books like Traction or uh, mm -hmm. Rocket Fuel as well, where they talk about... Yeah having the ideal combination is someone who can implement and someone who's visionary too. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that, that sort of combination helps a lot to, to grow a business. Yeah. And I, I love, yeah. Traction is definitely one of my, like must record, like my most recommended reads to people. Well, if they're like looking to like really grow a business for sure. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. I remember we had, well, just recently we 
interviewed uh, Julian, who's not not mm. me, but another Julian, who does recruitment, and he really recommends EOS and and sort of having mm. KPIs, having scorecards. It's just a good way to sort of glue everything together, especially as you scale, right? No, for sure. And just to like not 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 just that, but like just to know where you are, know mm. how every aspect of the business is performing. Like, like when, when I first started by my agency, I definitely didn't, I, in hindsight, I didn't really like my thoughts on how the business was going was just all gut based, but like yeah. having, having KPIs, having metrics, having goals was really helpful to be able to measure against and see, well, what do we need to get to this next level and, and so on. And also being able to like track our performance and have something to measure against to see what how we're doing versus how we were doing and be able to find ways to improve definitely i think as well just having accountability you know putting a number and everyone's got a number mm. that they work towards and they know right i'm responsible for this they're responsible for this and also you can see how everything links together it's kind of like a, a domino effect Absolutely. so yeah and just just one more thing before mm. we go so I noticed you were you were featured by Ahrefs reposted your affiliate outreach article, mm -hmm. right? Your tutorial yeah. on that. So you've been getting a lot of success with reaching out to affiliates, and yeah, yeah so How does this, that work? This is um, something that I, I haven't been doing that long, but like the results so far have been crazy good. So I wanted to just kind of, I guess I want, like wanted like shout it from the rooftops, like try this out. This is amazing. Yeah. This is going so well, and then like. In the back of my head, I'm like, are if this becomes like a backlinko skyscraper situation, then everyone starts doing it. I'm gonna get, I'm, uh, I'm gonna get diminishing returns on it. But I guess I should, I should be so lucky that that happens. Um, but um, yeah, so the, this uh, kind of strategy that that we've been implementing, um, the idea was, I want to find, I, I've got a SaaS business or an e-commerce product, and I want to get more affiliates for it. Um, not only because it can you know drive me traffic, but also because um, the affiliate links can be good inbound uh, links to your site. Um, in, in particular, if you are with like an affiliate program that does allow for this. And, and what I mean is um, if you sign up for a certain, there are a lot of affiliate networks and programs out there, and some of them will have like an, the affiliate link where the link is like your website slash question mark first promoter dash something, mm, something in affiliate yeah, ID, yeah. but some of them might be, uh, have it. So like the referral, like the affiliate link, go, like where the, the main domain is not your website, but the a domain of like the affiliate program itself that like redirects eventually to, to your site. Um, so if you are with a program, an affiliate program that where, where the link is to your site, that would be better for link building purposes, but Anyway, so uh, that being said, so we were looking for uh, looking for affiliate opportunities, and uh, kind of what I was thinking was, well, what about like who is, who is an affiliate of competitors in our space and other products in our space? Not necessarily direct competitors, but who who are the, who are the affiliates of the of these companies? And the reason I was interested in them in particular was because for most people that are affiliates they have like an authority site or an affiliate blog where they're making money on primarily on commissions from other from products where they have like a listicle article or a review article that mentions a specific product and then has affiliate links throughout the article to get you to sign up for the product and then uh, they get a commission from that and so um i was figuring like well these people would be would love to recommend my product and write about yeah, my product really since cool. since yeah. they're like that's their model they're making money off of these products but also they're already writing about my industry they're already writing about other products in my space and if they've got articles like those listicle articles about here are 20 products that you need to try out if they mm. just throw in an affiliate link to my product a little bit of effort um, and I might even be able to supply them with some content and some assets and stuff like that to make their, their life easier. They throw that in, they sign up for the affiliate program 
um, and they can just get paid. And that is an easy win for them. And so they're these people more than those skyscraper sites that you're reaching out to yeah. more than other sites that you're reaching out to are going to be really incentivized to link to you. And so it's win, win, it's win, win. Yeah, forever. exactly. Yeah. And so what, what I was, so what we were doing using a, a tool, like you can use Ahrefs, you can use SEMrush or Uber service, anything else, um, looking up sp a specific company, whether it's a competitor or a complementary product in your industry, looking at their backlink profile, and then through their backlink profile, searching for affiliate link common constructions. And so, like, for example, uh, First Promoter is an affiliate program. If you're in the First Promoter affiliate program, chances are your affiliate link setup is your domain slash question mark FP underscore something. So right. if I just type in FP underscore and I and through looking through the backlink profile and I get a hit, great. Now I know this particular company is using First Promoter as their affiliate and I can grab all of the backlinks wow. uh, using the first promoter construction. Yeah, yeah. And so I can get basically all their affiliates and then I'll reach out to those sites and say, hey, I saw that you are, you're an affiliate of this product. Um, since your audience is interested in, in products in this space, I thought you might be interested in uh, being an affiliate for our product as well. Uh, we have, here's what our affiliate commissions are. Uh, I also have a, a media library of assets that press assets that you can use and just drop into your article. Um, let me know what you think. And it's just worked crazy, crazy well. And there are a lot of opportunities, especially if you have like companies that are like, like if there's a, if there are larger companies uh, in, in your space that have a ton of affiliates and it's very easy and very repeatable. And yeah, I've been, super happy with this so far so it's an e basically you can you can find a qualified list of people willing to promote your product and you can automate it with the outreach yeah it's, exactly. it's pretty smart yeah definitely it's a great way to to grow the business for sure cool well i mean so if people want to sign up for postaga how can they do that um, so you can check out our website at postaga.com that's p o s t a g a.com and uh, just for your audience, um, if you uh, if you sign up and you, you and you sign up for a paid plan and you check out using the coupon code Goldie five zero, you'll get fifty percent off for your first three months. So yeah, it's the Goldie five zero uh, that'll get you fifty percent off for the first three months of using Postaga. Awesome. We'll include the link in the, the comments as well so people can easily find it. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. Thanks very much for coming on. Yeah. Thanks, Julian. This was fun. Cheers.